Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 3. This is what it says. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Pray with me. Lord, we need your strength this day that we might not grow weary and lose heart. Breathe on us the power of your Spirit that we might know that strength. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have a close friend that, well, we're still, still good friends. And we've been friends since we were boys, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but I know that it is. <laughs> um, he, we grew up together. He went, we went to high school together. He went to college graduated from college and he married his high school sweetheart they dated all during high school they dated all during college and not too long after college they got married they dated for over nine years and they stayed married less than nine months she said he was trying too hard and she left him well nobody was really sure what trying too hard meant but it didn't make any difference because she left him and uh and th that started what seemed like just a, a cavalcade of just horrible things, horrible things happening to him. He started a business, it was his own business, and he um, was there on the end of a 30-foot ladder. And I don't know if you know how, how high a 30-foot ladder is. It's about 30 feet high, and it's high. I mean, really high. And... Th Somebody was supposed to be at the bottom holding the ladder, and that person decided that, well, they'd just walk away. I guess they were going to go smoke a cigarette or phone a friend or something, and the ladder fell. He fell off a 30-foot ladder. Well, he, he jumped off the ladder right before it hit, but it wasn't like, you know, the cartoons where he was okay. No, he broke both feet and his tailbone. He was busted up, and he was, he was in bed for a long time. Well... The business that he started was in that vulnerable stage, and he lost his business. He lost the business that he had started, as well as being busted up. Well, and it seemed like one thing after another after another. I figured the only thing left was spontaneous combustion, that one day he was going to be watching TV, and then poof, he was just going to burst into flames. I mean, it was, things were going like that for him. And uh, there's southern expressions that go along with this. He, he was snake bit is one of those southern expressions. Another is he was followed by a cloud. Now he was just having a hard time one after another after another. Well, fast forward to now, he, 
he's doing better than he ever thought he would. He's doing really well and he's very happy. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him because things are, are going really well for him. But those southern expressions are out there, being snake bit. That's when one thing after another after another go bad, go hard, or very difficult. It's the adversity or being followed by a cloud. Well, the southern expression is not good at all, being followed by a cloud. It means you can't see your way. It means bad things happen one after another after another. But there's a Bible cloud. That's the one we read about this morning. And this cloud is very different. This is a cloud of witnesses. This is in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 12, that it talks about that cloud of witnesses. And chapter 12, verse 1, starts off with the word, therefore. In other words, it points to those things that have gone before. That the, the, the writer is trying to set up his... his his point and he makes his point by all the things that have gone before and he says therefore well what's he pointing to chapter 11 is all about that cloud people who've gone before people who've gone through hard difficult times people who've been snake bit so to speak people who who've had adversity and they've triumphed And some of those folks we know, they're people like Abraham and Isaac and Sarah and Jacob. Some folks we aren't as familiar with, like Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Um, These are folks that, they didn't just wake up in the morning and all of life went great for them. No, these are folks that had, they were snake bit. They went through hard times, difficult times, but they got to their feet. And they've become this cloud, these folks who've gone before. And maybe you can add to this cloud of witnesses, the folks who've gone before. And they're cheering us on. They're saying, get up. You can do it. Get going. They're a source of encouragement for you and and for me. Well, I like this kind of cloud. I like this kind of cloud a lot better than I like the southern cloud. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That in 2021, we're followed by a cloud. It might have felt like we were followed by the the southern cloud in 2020 and snake bit. It was a hard year. But in 2021, I want to draw our attention to a different kind of cloud. The cloud of witnesses that's encouraging The cloud of witnesses that are saying, you can do it. The cloud of witnesses that are saying, get on your feet, cheering us on. And the first thing that 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 cloud says is, is don't lose your footing. Verse 1, this is what it says. It says, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race set before us. Sin that entangles us. Sin that causes us to, to lose our, our, our footing. Lay that aside. So often we think of sin as the actions we take, things that we've done. Well, the first time that the Bible talks about sin, it's, it's not an action. It's an attitude. God's doing the talking, and he's talking to Cain. It is, Cain has put the pouty face on, and God says, Cain... Why has your countenance fallen? Must be his, his lip was hanging out and his face was looking droopy. And he says, well, why has your countenance fallen? It seems that Cain and Abel both had given their offering to God. But God had high regard for Abel's, but not so much for Cain's. And so Cain, he, he, he put the pouty face on. And, and God says, Why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, your face will be lifted. If you do not, sin is crouching at the door, ready to devour you. Sin isn't something that he's done. Sin is what's there, is the attitude. Sin is there that it's hiding. It's the attitude in the dark place. It's that attitude that's in the hidden place. Alcoholics Anonymous has done a great job of of helping people overcome addiction through the years. And one of the sayings that they have is, you're as sick as your secrets. I like that. That it's that attitude, it's that secret that's in the, the dark place. 
in the hidden place, in the secret place, that, that we'll either try and avoid it, so we'll wind up doing things that we just ought not be doing. We'll be, wind up stumbling over things, or, or we'll try and keep it from other people, that secret, that attitude, and we'll wind up stumbling, encumbered. We'll wind up snake bit. We'll wind up in, the, in that southern cloud, that place that we don't want to be. Well, 2020 has been a hard time. It's been a real hard time. And my hunch is that the pace of life, that the schedule of life, that the routine of your life has, has been turned upside down like it has for all of us. And you've found some things in those hidden places. And it may be that some of those things that they've been an encouragement, that they've lifted you up, they've been a source of strength. But my hunch is that there are other things, and those things you just soon nobody see, that you've tried to keep them hidden from God and tried to keep them hidden from yourself as well. Well, Hebrews remind us, don't lose your footing. Hebrews Chapter 2, verse 18 says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. That Jesus is able to come to your aid. He has strength that you and I don't have. Strength that shines there in the the hidden place, there in the secret place, there in in the dark place, to give us strength that we don't have. And we've got a cloud, a cloud that's, that's cheering us on, a cloud that's encouraging us, a cloud that, that says, you can do it. Don't lose your footing. But the second thing I want to talk about this morning is don't lose your focus. Verse 2 says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. That we fix our eyes on, on Jesus. It's so easy to to fix our eyes on other things and lose focus. Back in 1990, the Atlanta Braves were playing the New York Mets. And David Cohn was pitching for the Mets. He was pitching to one of the Braves batters, and, and he hit the ball between first and second base. It was close enough to first where the first baseman was fielding the ball. Well, in this kind of play, it's the time for the pitcher to come off the mound take the throw from the first baseman who's fielding the ball, touch the bag so the runner will be out. Well, David Cohn got the ball and he thought he tagged the base, but the umpire said he didn't and that the runner was safe. Well, David Cohn went nuts and he started arguing with the umpire and then that's when the Braves runners realized, well, he was caught up in the argument, so they kept running the bases. Two runs scored and the Braves won the game because he got caught up in the argument, in the injustice, in the thing that he didn't think was fair, and he lost focus of the game that was going on around him. Well, it's easy to lose focus. It's easy to lose focus when we draw our attention to the injustice, what other folks are doing, what other folks should be doing, and we take our eyes off Jesus. And it says that Jesus is the author of faith. And what other folks are doing, that's not the author of faith. It says that Jesus is the perfecter in faith. Other folks aren't the perfecter in faith. Other folks doing or not doing what they ought to be doing, that's not what helps us perfect or mature in faith. That's not what does it at all. James Moore writes about this maturing in faith. And this is what he says. He says, He says, I've been around the church for a long time now, and over the years I've come to realize that there are three approaches that describe the way people relate to the church. Some people relate to the church childishly. That is, they say, I'll come to church as long as you please me. I'll participate as long as you let me sit where I want to sit, as long as I, I get the choir robe that I want. As long as we sing the hymns I like to sing, as long as the preacher says what I want him to say, as long as the teacher teaches what I want him to teach, I'll come as long as you make me happy. 
But if anyone crosses me, if anyone does something I don't like, I'll quit. I'll jump on my tricycle and go home. How childish. And then there's some who relate to the church in an adolescent way. They say, I don't need the church. I surely don't need to go to Sunday school. That's for kids and old folks, not for me. I'm going to live my life out there in the far country doing my own thing. I have three cars and a boat. Why would I need the church? Nobody's going to tell me how to live my life, especially not the church. James Moore goes on to say, But then, thank God, there are those who relate to the church as spiritually mature adults, who say, Let me be the church for others. Let me be part of the continuing ministry of Jesus Christ. Lord, make me an instrument of your amazing grace. Let me be a servant Christian. Let me do whatever needs to be done to help the cause of Christ and the church. Being perfected in faith. It means going from from being a servant of self to mature and being a, a servant of Christ. And we're surrounded, we're surrounded by those who who matured in their faith. Those who, well, some of them, they were snake bit. They were, they fell. They were in that, that southern cloud where they couldn't find their way. But with God's help, they came back on their feet. They came back on their feet and and they were victorious in the faith. Those who've gone before surround you and, and surround me that we might know that that encouragement, that strength. Here in 2021, know that you're not alone. Know that you're not alone. Don't lose focus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The last thing that I want to talk about this morning is don't lose heart. Verse 3 says, For consider him who has endured such hostilities by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Joyce Halliday tells a story about a teacher who was, who was hired by a school system to help students who were either in the hospital or at home sick over an extended time. She would receive the assignments from their teachers and tutor them so they wouldn't fall behind in their studies. This particular day, she was assigned to a boy who was in the hospital, and just before she walked into the boy's room, she realized where she was. She was on the burn unit. But what she was about to see, she wasn't prepared for. This boy was, he was badly burned over the whole of his body. And she was sent there to teach him English grammar, nouns and adverbs. The whole time she was teaching, She was just wondering, what am I doing here? And the only response the boy had was grunts and groans. She finished her lesson and she left. Well, the next day, one of the young nurses there in the hospital stopped her in the hall and said, what did you say to that boy yesterday? Well, before she could apologize, the nurse went on to say, whatever it was you said to him, it made all the difference. That... (laughs) that." He, he made a complete turn yesterday after you met with him. Well, later she found out from the boy. The boy said, I didn't think I was going to live. And then I began to think, well, they wouldn't send someone to teach nouns and adverbs to a boy that was dying, would they? He said, I decided I could live. Hope is a powerful thing and hope has a name that name is is Jesus not only is he the one that's author and perfecter of faith he's the one that that gives heart that gives strength that Jesus is the one that is not sitting off there in the cloud in the in the cheap seats cheering us on. He's the one who takes his seat in our hearts, 
who gives us strength that we don't have. Hebrews chapter 41 verse 10 says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not look anxiously about you for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus is the right hand of God who sits in, in your heart and mind when we receive his spirit to live and make his home on the inside of us. And he gives us strength that we don't have. The Apostle Paul, while he was sitting in jail, writes to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 13, and he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He not only strengthens Paul, he strengthens you and me as well. 20, 21, know that you're not alone. that you're being followed by a cloud. You're being followed by a cloud that they're, they're, they're encouraging you on. They're cheering you on. They're letting you know you can do it. And that seated in your heart of hearts is Jesus Christ giving strength that, that you don't have. Invite him to make his home this day so you don't so you don't lose your footing, you don't lose your focus, and you don't lose heart. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, I know that there are folks that feel like that when they were snake bit in a cloud, that southern kind of cloud, all during 2020. Breathe on us the power of your strength, the power of of your Holy Spirit in 2021 that we might know the strength of your hand. Not just out there somewhere, but strengthening, strengthening us this day. That we might not lose our footing. That we might not lose our focus. And we might not lose heart. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.